Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. Kaushal this side and I hope you guys are doing well. Today, we'll take you through CSS pagination. In this video tutorial, we are going to explain what CSS pagination is and how it becomes handy when it comes to make a web page look more engaging and interactive to the user. In this video tutorial, we are going to explain the syntax and usage of pagination using CSS. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have regular updates on multiple programming videos. So if you are a programmer and if you want to learn something new, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Code. So without any further delay, let's get started. Before we move on to the programming part, let's understand what CSS pagination is. CSS pagination refers to the use of cascading style sheet or CSS to create a pagination design on a web page. So pagination is a common web design pattern used to divide a large set of content into smaller and more manageable chunks, often displayed as a number links at the bottom or top of the page. So CSS can be used to style these pagination links, making them more visually appealing and easier for the user to navigate. So, the basic idea is to divide your web page into different pages and then create some links where the user can navigate through different pages of your website. So CSS can be used to style these pagination links. So for example, CSS can be used to set the color, font and size of the pagination links. And we can use hover effect and active effect in the state of links. So we can also adjust the spacing and alignment of the links on a web page. Now CSS can also create custom animations or transitions when user click on a pagination link. So these are some of the use cases of CSS when it comes to creating a pagination design. Now let's understand pagination with the help of an example. So before that, let me tell you this. CSS pagination can be done or implemented using a variety of techniques. We can use CSS pseudo class. We can use CSS grids and flex boxes. We can use frameworks like bootstrap or foundation ultimately the goal of css pagination is to enhance the user experience by making it easier for the user to navigate and consume content of a web page so let's move on to the programming part so let's say we have a web page with a long list of items and we want to divide into multiple pages to make it easier for the user so we can use css pagination to style the page links at the bottom of the list so in this example, I'm going to show you how to add pagination links on a web page. So first of all, let's add some links over here. Let's say I'm writing over here, div class is equals to pagination and here's a div tag. Now we are going to add some links. So let's say I'm writing hash over here and then I'll use classes active. So I'm using this first link, then I'll create some more links. Now we'll write hash over here for all the links or we can give links to other web pages as well. So for now I'm writing hash over here. Okay, we'll write two. So this is the second link. Now copy it for some more times and change the numbers. Fine, we have three, then we have four, five, six and seven. Save it and here you can see we have seven links present on a web page. It looks simple right so here we are done with the html part means we are done with the structure of our links now we'll move to the css part where we are going to style them now pagination along itself is not a property so we are going to use different css properties to achieve css pagination so we'll use the style tag over here now we have a class named pagination and that's it. Now we are going to use the display property first as flex. Save it. So here you can see we have all the links. Now we'll justify the content at the center. Save it. And here you can see the content is at the center. Now we are going to align the items at the center. So here you can see. Now we are going to define the margin top. So margin top, let's say we are going to set as 20 pixels from the top. And yes, we are done with the pagination property. Now we are going to style the anchor tags. For that, we have to write here the class name along with the tag name. Now we are going to use display as block for all the links. Fine. So that display is set to block. Now we'll use padding. 
okay we'll write over here padding and then we'll use the padding as let's say 10 pixels so here you can see we have all the links i hope this is visible for you guys now it's visible and then we'll use margin for each anchor tag means each number so we are going to set the margin as 0 pixel and 10 pixels for top bottom and left right respectively so if i set the size to 100 percent so here you can see the all the links are present at the center i'm increasing the size a little bit so that it will be easier for you guys to understand it now after margin we are going to use border for each anchor tag so i'm writing over here one pixel solid and let's use this color gray so here you can see the border now it looks something like there are some buttons or links present over here now we are going to use the border radius okay we have to write here border radius and border radius if i say i'm giving as four pixels here you can see the borders are a little rounded for each of the links right or each of the buttons we can also say now we have to define the color which is the font color so font color let's say i'm keeping it as black it's the default save it and the font color is changed to back black and now what we are going to do is we are going to remove these underlines from these buttons or anchor tags for that we have the property which we always use which is the text decoration property we are going to use none and here you can see we have seven different buttons right now we are done with this as well so the next thing we are going to do is we are going to write here pagination and we are going to set what will happen when we'll hover over these buttons fine first of all i want to change okay background color so we have to remove this space from here and we have, have to write here background color so let's set it to gray and hover over any button you can see the background color is set to gray let's change it a bit and what we are going to do is we are going to set it to light gray i don't actually remember the actual values for this rgb values but yeah it will work so here you can see if you are using vs code then it will be easy for you guys to understand this now if you want to do anything else like uh, you can change the border radius to 50 percent on hovering save it here you can see the border radius is also changed to 50 percent on hovering over any button it is changing to a circle not a rectangle or square anymore fine we can change other things as well we can increase the size and we can apart from that we can also use we can also change the size right we can also change the font size as well so if i write here font font size is 15 pixel on hovering so here you can see the font size is reducing a bit on hovering and what if i set it to 30 pixels save it and here you can see it looks different so we'll not use border radius and now we'll see so here you can see it looks more engaging right if the user will hover over any of these links or buttons it will be easier to go to a different web page right using these links so now we are done with the hover effect as well the last thing we are left with is the active fine so we have to use the same way we'll write over here dot pagination and we'll write over here a dot active the one which is active we have set one as active for now and we'll change the background color fine for the active one so if i write here background color as beach save it and here you can see this one is active the background color is beach for the active one so you can use any dark color as well and we'll use some color from here only and yeah this is the color which is a little darker than what we were using previously so yeah this is how we can use css pagination property now let me explain what actually happened in this example so in this example we used a flexbox layout to center the pagination links horizontally each link is styled as a block element with padding margin and border so then we have set the text color for them which is uh, here black and we have also added a hover state that changed the background color to this gray color right so on hovering over these buttons the background is changing to 
gray of that particular button. Now to indicate which page the user is currently on, we have added a class of active to the first link, right? So here you can see the class is active to the first link. We have added it in order to for the user to know which page he is currently on. Fine. Now the link has a background color of uh, this, which is what we can say greenish or yellow or we can say olive green in color, light olive green. And the text is also black. So the text will remain the same on hovering over it. The font size will increase to 30 pixels. Fine. So we can adjust these styles to match the design of our web page and make the pagination look more visually appealing to and user friendly. So one last thing before we end up this video is we can use any link over here. So if I write here CSS forms and if I write here CSS forms dot HTML, this is the file we ha already have in a system so if i click on this it will take us to that particular file so here you can see we have a form which we have created in the previous videos and yeah this is how css pagination works we can keep these pagination links either on the top of our web page or at the bottom and it will be easy for the user to go through the different chunks or different chunks of data which is present on a website so yeah, this is how we can use CSS pagination property. There is no specific property for pagination and we have to use different say, CSS properties to achieve pagination. So that's all for this video guys. If you feel that we have missed out on some important topics or if you have any doubts related to any of the topics we have covered in this particular video, then please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below and we'll definitely answer them for you. So that's all for this video guys. See you in another video with some new CSS content. Until then, keep coding and stay tuned to Simply Code. Thank you.